star of the show. One of my hands down favorite Italian dishes, carbonara. Favorite Italian dish. Oh! Then I'm gonna drop some frozen peas into all for the carb. Quick stir, and I'm gonna take them out. Bravo, that's right. I mean, the pasta should be cooked once the sauce is ready. In this case, the egg is ready, the pancetta is ready. All he has to do is to mix everything together. There's nothing else to add. Just remove the peas. They go right under here. So pull. Maybe your mom should have made carbonara. Oh! Hi guys, in this video we are reacting to Guys Fieri Carbonara. Fieri, fiero in Italian means proud. Let's see if Guy is proud of his carbonara. Star of the show. One of my hands down favorite Italian dishes, carbonara. Wait. Did I just see peas and parsley in the carbonara? Yes, look at that. We got parsley. It's there, 100%. Favorite Italian dishes. And the peas. And he's saying it's his favorite Italian dish. Listen. Down favorite Italian dishes. Favorite Italian dish. Oh! Okay, the problem here is big, right? He's saying it's his favorite Italian dish, carbonara. But to me, the beginning already doesn't look like carbonara. So what's Italian about this? What's Italian about this? You Gordon Ramsay and all your friends who use peas everywhere. This is not a pie. The pancetta. If you can have your butcher or your deli person cut that for me in about quarter inch, that's what you're looking for. That's a nice ring. That's a big ring, Mr. Guy Fieri. Pancetta, yeah. I agree with what he's saying. You should cut it that thick so you can create cubes. People like cubes. I like to cut into strips. Okay, the guanciale, big chick. It's getting more popular. You can buy it online. If not, get a pancetta. But you want fat on one side, meat in the middle, fat on the other side. So when you cook it, it becomes nice and crispy. The fat will become oil. So you have less fat on the sides and the crispy meat in the middle. It's an important detail. If you don't have the pancetta to work with, thick cut bacon with as little seasoning to it as possible. I need to get some of the... All right, he said bacon, it's an option, it's an option. Pancetta out, I've taken this pancetta, gone nice and slow. Mom, if you don't mind, I need four yolks. Ooh, he's using his mom. And one whole egg. Four yolks and one whole egg. Four, four yolks, one whole egg. So I'm pretty sure he's making 400 grams of pasta, 400 grams, so for four people. And the extra egg, we say it's for the pan. So you always count one egg yolk for each 100 grams of pasta. And the egg yolk, it's always on top. Even if you make a kilo of pasta, you always add one egg. If you make uh, 200 grams of pasta, and use two egg yolk, you always add one egg. Then one egg, entire egg is for the pan. Half of the pancetta comes out, nice and crispy. I haven't put too much heat on this. Nice crunch, nice crisp. Okay. Looks nice. The pancetta looks nice, nice and crispy, beautiful. Half of it, the other half stays in the pan. I like this. I like this. So we'll hold on to this. Let it let it continue to cook down a little bit, and let me get some uh, salt into my pasta water. Very nice. Salt is important. In this case, carbonara needs less salt because the pecorino cheese and the guanciale as well, pancetta, being very salty. But it's fine. I mean, I like to use salt in my pasta water, so it's pretty good. So far, so good. And bucatini is the pasta. Now, this is, out of all the types of pasta, this is my favorite. Bucatini. Bucatini is a thick, round spaghetto with a hole in the middle. A pasta I don't like, but it's the pasta you must, and I always use, for amatriciana, pasta amatriciana. It's just perfect. Bucatini and amatriciana, it's a classic Roman made with bucatini, and it's to die for. Amatriciana is basically a carbonara with tomato sauce, no eggs. It's just beautiful, perfect with bucatini. So in, in this case, yes, you can make it with bucatini. You do need to use lots of sauce because the bucatini absorbs very well. 
So maybe that's why he's using four eggs yolk in one egg. The kids are big penne regate, you know, the penne pasta. This to me is, is kind of the cross. Love spaghetti, love the texture. It's what we used to throw on the uh, ceiling uh, in, in yeah. Ferndale. What? You used to throw on the ceiling? What? Why do you throw the pasta on the ceiling? And you just throw it. And voila. Why do you throw the pasta on the ceiling? Is that fun? Do you find it funny to throw the pasta on the ceiling on the wall? Is that a toy to you? That's pasta, that's food. People work very hard, day and night, to make pasta. And then you throw it on the ceiling? I'm gonna throw you on the ceiling. What the? I really think spending the money on it, getting the pasta that's got kind of a rough finish to it, not a super sheen, it's the way that it was dried, it was the way that it was processed. Bravo, 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 you learned this, bravo. It is important. And there are tricks, I did a video where I show you how to buy pasta like an Italian, and you can learn more about it. Pay the money for the pasta, you're gonna eat it, do it, okay? Good, you only pay a one dollar more, maybe one fifty, two dollars. You don't, you don't, you don't go broken for two dollars. So that goes down. Nothing like dry pasta, it just gives, it gives a better tooth. Al dente, uh -huh. you know, to the tooth. Yeah. Now, a little cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper in carbonara. That's your personal choice. You can add a spicy touch to the carbonara. That's personal. Okay. Just a touch. Just, I mean, we're talking just a touch. And a little black pepper, mom, if you want to go ahead and... Uh... No, little. Carbonara means carbone, like charcoal. So the carbonara needs to have lots of black pepper, a lot. You do need a lot of black pepper, okay? Cacio e pepe, carbonara, pasta alla grigia, pepper, pepper. Romans love pepper. Romans put pepper everywhere, even in coffee. Uh, and grab a uh, fork and kind of mix this up a little bit. There we go. The mom is like, uh, guy, I have no idea what you're doing. This is not carbonara. You asked me to help you. I feel embarrassed. Look at her face when you said, go and get me a fork. She's trying to say, what's going on here? Can I get out? They go right under here. So pull. Maybe your mom should have made carbonara. Oh! Pull the rest of this off. I just have to divide it. I'm going to save some of that pancetta right there. I wanted to let it go a little bit further. Some of the pancetta is going to go on top. Let it cool down a little bit, and then we're going to mix it into the eggs. So it's going to be the eggs. And he's done this before, so he knows what he's doing. At the same time, I'm worried because he believes he's making carbonara, but he's not. But so far, everything is good. So far, I like everything is done. My only issue is that I watched the beginning and I can see peas and parsley. So I hope he did it as a clickbait. And mom, you can go ahead and throw that cheese in whenever you're ready. We're not making an omelet. Any this eggs? is all the beginning. We're making an omelet. What cheese is that? Huh? Is that pecorino cheese or parmigiano? What is that? Pink preparation right in there. This is all the beginning preparation for making the car. Also, tell me how much you use. We need to know how much you use. You use so many eggs. I need to know how much pecorino you use. Bernard, it's very simple, but it's just premium, premium ingredients done the right way. I'll take the heat off of that. I'm gonna mix that bucatini in there in just a little bit. Look at that, it's got the garlic there. Look at that. It's got the garlic there when you go in. It's got the garlic ready to go in. Look how many cloves it's got. This is where, see he was doing everything so perfectly. This is where the magic begins for you guys that like to create and brings everything to the next level. This is when you up everything. I have got some bucatini pasta down that I'm gonna drop some frozen peas into all for the car. Why? Why, why, why did you watch Gordon Ramsay video? Why did Gordon Ramsay create the Peas revolution, huh? This is not peas. This is war. Why are you using peas for carbonara? Carbonara. Now you're saying you put the peas in. Oh, they're gonna overcook. It's gonna be crazy. No. What's gonna happen? I'm gonna give them one little quick. What's gonna happen? I'll tell you what's gonna happen. You are ruining an Italian tradition. If you go to Rome and you tell a taxi driver, hey, can you take me to a restaurant where they make carbonara with peas? He's gonna kick you out of the taxi. Do you understand how serious this is? Carbonara is serious business. Do not play with carbonara. 
and do not use peas in your carbonara. Do you like peas? Well, cook peas on the side or put it in your pie, but not in carbonara. Quick stir, and I'm gonna take them out. That's just gonna thaw them out just enough. I don't want them to sit there and get, to get uh, thawed out on the counter, then they get mushy and it just won't work right. Bravo, that's right. I mean, the pasta should be cooked once the sauce is ready. In this case, the egg is ready, the pancetta is ready. All he has to do is to mix everything together. There's nothing else to add. Just remove the peas. Okay, over to the pot, to this pan here that has a little bit of that pancetta fat. That's what I'm looking for. Peas, I can't believe it. I mean, it's, all these beautiful flavors there, making love together. You got the beautiful oil from the pancetta. Just stir, toss this pasta, and let the pasta have fun with the oil. Reserve that water there. Just to make a little, a little bit of the, uh, little bit of the pan sauce, pancetta, some yolks, and some Parmesan cheese, all go together for this dish. Now, bucatini, the pasta with a hole in it, the spaghetti with a hole in it, isn't the normal one. Now, the pan, I believe, is hot because I can see, the, I can, I can hear the cooking. You can hear. It. Listen to the sound. Listen. Hole in it, the spaghetti with a hole in it, isn't the normal. It's very loud, right? Now, in my video, my original carbonara video. I did say, have the heat, the fire, on a very, very, very low heat. Very, very low. That's a technique for beginners, for everyone who wants to make carbonara. The reason why it's very low is because it doesn't make you scramble eggs. In that video I made, there is a little scramble, but it's not really a scramble. It's something like egg made love with the Charlie, so you can see that beautiful old-fashioned carbonara. In this case, the pan is so hot, it's sizzling. He added the egg right now. What is it gonna happen here? While he's concentrating on talking about bucatini, we are going to get scrambled eggs. Unless he does this extremely fast. Let's see. Oh, one that you use for this dish, but not to worry, it's my favorite. So what I wanna do is move this real quick and make sure that I don't create omelet a la pasta. Okay, he knows. Okay, now let me get a little bit of Italian parsley in. The Italian parsley. Thank God it's not called Roman parsley, otherwise you put parsley in every Roman dish. Italian parsley doesn't make carbonara better. The colors of the carbonara come from the nice eggs, from the pecorino, from the guanciale, or in this case the pancetta. And the, and the charcoal, the pepper. So you got the yellow spaghetti, you got the white of the pecorino, you have the dark brown of the guanciale, the orange of the egg, plus the pepper. Don't you like the color? Don't you think the presentation is great? Why do you need green? Into there, oh. get down into the bowl. I don't see any creamy, I don't see creaminess there. Do you see any cream? To me it looks like spaghetti agli olio with peas. Do you see any cream? You know what I'm talking about? Where is the cream? And the pancetta's already there. Beautiful color. I don't see the cream. I do not see the carbonara cream. This reminds me of uh, the Greek Akis, the Greek chef that I love, that he made carbonara, the light carbonara. Remember that video where he uses these uh, light ingredients? Bechamel, they call the light and peas and everything, and that was a light carbonara. This reminds me of his. So maybe the, these guys must have watched each other's videos because this is a terrible representation of carbonara. Terrible. Right behind you, Mom. Okay. Okay, I got a little reserved pancetta that we hit right on top of that. Reserved pancetta. It sounds like refined. Just put it in the plate, serve to the person, then you put pancetta on top and the pepper and the pecorino. That, and a little bit of the Italian parsley. Angora, how much parsley do you need? How much parsley do you need? It just makes me angry. At home, in your kitchen, do what you want. On national TV, when millions of people are watching you, you do this, you get paid for this. I don't get paid to do what I'm doing to, to show you, and you do this. Well, I, I don't wanna go on TV and do this. I wanna do it. For free, I do it for free, Food Network. I promise you, I come on your channel for free if you allow me to show how to do these recipes. Can you please do that? Can you please guys help me to get in touch with Food Network and let them know that I exist 
and I will do this for free on their channel. Can you please help me to go on Food Network, please? And some more of the grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmigiano Reggiano, I like the way you call it. Good pronunciation. So we know I use Parmigiano Reggiano, which is a choice because it's too salty. I understand the pecorino could be too salt. I know the pecorino is too salty, I know. But you need a little bit of pecorino for the flavor, okay? You can have maybe 70, 60% Parmigiano and 40, 30 of pecorino, but you do need a little bit of pecorino, okay? So, what do you say? What do you say about this? Oh my goodness, so much dynamite. What do I say? Hungry for more. No, I'm not hungry for more. You put peas, parsley, the technique is wrong. The first half of the video was perfect. It was done the right way. It was beautiful. The second half, you changed everything. I don't know what your mind told you. That was when your mom was trying to leave the room. And then you added the peas and no, no, no pepper. The, the egg was mixed wrong in the pan. I don't know what to say. It's done the wrong way, and this is called Guys Fieri makes carbonara classica, which means classic carbonara. If you say to me I'm making peas carbonara my way because I'm creative, I would be, yes, that's fine. But if you call it carbonara classica, classic carbonara, or national TV, I'm sorry, I need to react. You, you cannot do this, okay? So, Mr. Guy Fieri, you're a nice guy, I know you're very famous, but you need to spend one night in jail. You need to get punished one night in jail eating the real carbonara 24 hours 24 hours in jail just eating carbonara until the pepper and the egg cream comes out of your ears so i hope you will learn how to make carbonara and the next time you go on tv you won't do this anymore and you apologize on national tv so guys thank you so much for watching this episode i still can't believe in 2022 we have to go through this. I'm so sorry. And I hope we're not gonna see this stuff anymore. Hopefully this was the last carbonara reaction because I don't wanna react to carbonara anymore. Come on, in 2022, we need help from everyone. We need help from the online community and change it. If a restaurant does this, you need to tell them. They need to stop. They need to stop. So thank you so much. Write a comment below and let me know what you think. But my mission now is to go on Food Network for free, sharing my recipes. Is this gonna happen in 2023? It's up to you. It's all up to you.